Runes 1. This is about the stillness in moving things, in running water, also in the sleep of winter seeds, where time to come has tensed itself in ciphering a script so fine, only the hourglass can magnify it. Only the years unfold its sentence from the root. I have considered such things often, but I cannot say I have thought deeply of them. That is my theme of thought and the defeat of thought before its object, where it turns as from a mirror and returns to be the thought of something and the thought of thought. A traitor, doubly burdened, commercing out of one stillness and into another. Two. About Ulysses, the learned have reached two distinct conclusions. In one, he secretly returns to Ithaca, is recognized by Eurycleia, destroys the insolent suitors, and makes himself known to Penelope, describing the bed he built. Then, at the last dissolve, we see him with Telemachus leaving the palace, planning to steal sheep. The country squire resumes a normal life. But in the other, out beyond the gates of Hercules, gabbling persuasively about virtue and knowledge, he sails south to disappear from sight behind the sun. Drowning near blessed shores, he flames in hell. I do not know which ending is the right one. Three. Sunflowers, traders rounding the horn of time into deep afternoons, sleepy with gain, the fall of silence has begun to storm around you where you nod your heavy heads, whose bare poles raking out of true will crack, driving your wreckage on the world's lee shore. Your faces no more will follow the sun, but bow down to the ground with the heavy truth that dereliction learns how charity is strangled out of selfishness at last, when, golden misers in the courts of summer, you are stripped of gain for coining images and broken on this quarter of the wheel. It is on savage ground you spill yourselves and spend the tarnished silver of your change. Four. The seed sleeps in the furnaces of death, a cock's egg slept, till hatching by a serpent wound in his wintry coil, a spring so tight in his radical presence that every tense is now. Out of his head the terms of kind, distributed in syntax, come to judgment. Our basilisks who write our sentences deep at the scripture's pith in rooted tongues, how one shall marry while another dies. Give us our ignorance. The family tree grows upside down and shakes its heavy fruit, whose buried stones philosophers have sought, for each stone bears the living word each word will be made flesh, and all flesh fall to seed. Such stones from the tree, and from the stones such blood. Five. The fat time of the year is also time of the atonement. Birds to the berry bushes, men to the harvest, a time to answer for both present plenty and emptiness to come. When the slain legal deer is salted down, 
When apples smell like goodness, cold in the cellar. You hear the ram's horn sounded in the high mount of the Lord, and you lift up your eyes as though, by this observance, you might hide the dry husk of an eaten heart, which brings nothing to offer up, no sacrifice acceptable but the cancelled out desires and satisfactions of another year's abscess, whose zero in his winter's mercy still hides the undecipherable seed. Six. White water now in the snowflakes prison. A mad king in a skull cap thinks these thoughts in regular hexagons. Each one unlike each of the others. The atoms of memory, like those that Democritus knew, have hooks at either end. But these, insane tycoon, these are the riches of order snowed without end in this distracted globe, where is no state to fingerprint the flakes or number these moments melting in flight. Seeds mirroring substance without position or a speed and course unsubstanced. What may the spring be deep in the atom among galactic snows, but the substance of things hoped for, argument of things unseen, white water, fall and fall. Seven, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, said to the firstborn, the dignity and strength and defiler of his father's bed. Fit motto for a dehydrated age, nervously watering whiskey and stock. Quick freezing dreams into realities. Brain surgeons have produced the Proustian syndrome that patients dunk their tasteless Madeleine in vain. Those papers that the Japanese amused themselves by watering until they flowered and became combre, flower no more. The plastic and cosmetic arts unbreakably record the last word and the least word, till sometimes even the muse in her transparent raincoat resembles a condom. Eight, to go low, to be as nothing, to die, to sleep in the dark water, threading through the fields of ice, the soapy frothing water that slithers under the culvert below the road, water of dirt, water of death, dark water, and through the tangle of the sleeping roots under the coppery cold beech woods the green pine woods, and past the buried hulls of things to come, and humbly through the breathing dreams of all small creatures sleeping in the earth, to fall with the weight of things down on the one still ebbing stream, to go on to the end with the convict hunted through the swamp all night, the dog's corpse in the ditch, to come at last into the pit where Zero's eye is closed. Nine. In this dehydrated time of digest pills and condensations, the most expensive presents are thought to come in the smallest packages, in atoms, for example. There are still to be found at carnivals men who engrave the Lord's Prayer on a grain of wheat for pennies, but they are a dying race, unlike the men now fortunate 
who bottle holy water in plastic tears, and bury mustard seeds in lucite lockets, and for safety, sell to be planted on the dashboard of your car, the statues in durable celluloid of Mary and St. Christopher, who both with humble power in the world's floodwaters carried their heavy Savior and their Lord. 10. White water, white water, feather of a form between the stones, is the race run to stay or pass away? Your utterance is riddled, rainbowed, and clear and cold, tasting of stone, its brilliance blinds me. But still I have seen white water at the breaking of the ice when the high places render up the new children of water and their tumbling light laughter runs down the hills and the small fist of the seed unclenches in the day's dazzle. How happiness is helpless before your fall, white water. And history is no more than the shadows thrown by clouds on mountainsides, a distant chill when all is brought to pass by rain and birth and the rising of the dead. 11. A holy man said to me, split the stick and there is Jesus. When I split the stick to the dark marrow and the splintery grain, I saw nothing that was not wood, nothing that was not God. And I began to dream how from the tree that stood between the rivers came Aaron's rod that crawled in front of Pharaoh. And came the rod of Jesse, flowering in all the generations of the kings. And came the timbers of the second tree the sticks and yard arms of the holy three-masted vessel whereon the Son of Man hung between thieves. And came the crown of thorns, the lance and ladder, when was shed that blood streamed in the grain of Adam's tainted seed. Twelve. Consider how the seed lost by a bird will harbor in its branches most remote descendants of the bird, while everywhere and unobserved the soft green stalks and tubes of water are hardening into wood, whose hide gnarled, knotted, flowing, and its hidden grain remember how the water is streaming still. Now does the seed asleep, as in a dream, where time is compacted under pressures of another order, crack open like stone, from whose division pours a stream between the raindrop and the sea, running in one direction down and gathering in its course that bitter salt, which spices us the food we sweat for and the blood and tears we shed. 13. There sailed out on the river, Conrad saw, the dreams of men, the seeds of commonwealths, the germs of empire. To the ends of the earth, one many-veined bloodstream swayed the hulls of darkness gone, of darkness still to come, and sent its tendrils steeping through the roots of wasted continents. That echoing pulse carried the ground swell of all sea returns, muttering under history and its taste 
saline, and cold was as a mirror of the taste of human blood. The sailor leaned to lick the mirror clean, the somber and immense mirror that Conrad saw, and saw the other self, the sacred cane of blood, who would see the commonwealth in the land of Nod. 14. There is a threshold that meniscus where the strider walks on drowning waters, or that tense curved membrane of the camera's lens, which darkness holds against the battering light and the distracted drumming of the world's importunate plenty. Now that threshold, the water of the eye where the world walks delicately, is as a needle threaded from the reel of a raveling stream to stitch dissolving figures in a watered cloth. A damask, either sided as the shroud of the Lord of Ithaca, labored at in light, destroyed in darkness, while the spidery oars carry his keel across deep mysteries to harbor in unfathomable mercies. 15. To watch water, to watch running water, is to know a secret. Seeing the twisted rope of runnels on the hillside, the small freshets leaping and limping down the tilted field in April's light, the green, grave, and opaque swirl in the middle pond where the current slides to be combed and carded silver at the fall. It is a secret, or it is not to know the secret, but to have it in your keeping, a locked box, Bluebeard's room, the deathless thing which it is death to open. Knowing the secret, keeping the secret, herring bones of light ebbing on beaches, the huge artillery of tides, it is not knowing, it is not keeping, but being the secret hidden from yourself.